Hello, and welcome to Dolphin's Dive, the weekly strategically minded handelobber stream hosted by someone who is a dolphin. The dolphin. Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible. Ugh. So any comments or activity actively working against that goal are not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra Games on Twitch and Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow me at LewDolphin21 on Twitter and on Twitch and YouTube, it's LewDolphin, no digits. Sentinels the Multiverse, One Deck Dungeon, and Bottom of the Ninth are available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices, and Aeon's End is available in early access on Steam, and you can get the games and more info at Handelabra.com. Woo! Okay. Intro done. Nailed it. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next week. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, this week, I think... Um so we're just whittling down the achievements that uh, are in one deck dungeon we have 11 achievements left about half of which are for losing a game uh by a special way the ones that don't involve losing which i want to kind of i want to just get rid of all the non-losing ones the losing ones i just don't really want to do it just feels wrong uh, but we have to fill out the core hero progression sheets we have to fill out the force the shadows progression sheets uh, we have to win a game without facing any encounters that have fewer than three experience. Win a gauntlet run on fearless difficulty, which I could have sworn I did. I don't know what happened there. Uh, win a game only claiming and using free skills. And cover every challenge box in a combat encounter after rolling too poorly to cover any one box. Not entirely sure how we're going to do that one. Hello, Seamus. Uh, but I think I'll try for the no easy prey this time. So win a game without facing any encounters that have fewer than three experience so we have to be pretty careful because uh first off we have to win a game and second off we actually um need to figure out how to get rid of encounters that we don't want uh but we do have a hero who does have a skill that would help once per floor discard an open door that will get rid of two experience doors for us uh, is there, there isn't a basic skill that would do that, but I think there's a potion. Do I need to select a dungeon? There we go. Um, discard the encounter card and ignore all consequences. We're probably going to need to actually use rewind uh, for this. But we'll take the archer um, and I think we'll bring along the druid. Is it? No, it's not the druid. Uh, the Alchemist. Yeah, we want the Alchemist so that we could use Rewind a couple more times. Uh, so that settles the heroes. Now which dungeon do we want? Uh, one Strength, two Agility, one Mana. One Strength, one Agility, two Mana. Hmm. Seems like we're very Agility and Mana focused here. Um but not as much strength, so I don't really want to try for something that will require strength. Um, I mean, the Hydra does have strength on the boss fight and requires sixes. And we spend extra time. Hey, Sparky, how are you doing? There's some strength there. Not happy with that one. Uh, Poison Elemental doesn't have much strength other than these two sixes and I like this agility 15 but it does it's a very agility heavy situation but um yeah I might just do the realm of venom I kind of like that dungeon hungry or hungy hungy <laughs> Um, let's just be novice. We want the extra potions for rewind. We want, we'll stick with the forest deck. All right, so this has been settled. Archer and Alchemist in Realm of Venom with, um, oh, I guess we also have to settle these. But precision is, I prefer precision over, is it the reroll one? Reduce the difficulty of each armor box by one. What was the other mana one? Force Bolt. Um, so the problem with this is that it's a combat skill, but all the perils in this dungeon have automatic armor requirements, so it's, uh, 
we want to go for a peril thing here? The perils are auto skills. Nope, oh, I skipped the other one. I was looking at the wrong place. Increase one of your dice by one. I like that one. Or reducing to one time. Let's go with ingenuity because perils are definitely things that can be quite perilous. Looks like we still have a green thing going on. I guess so. Uh, green is my favorite color, so it's fitting. But yeah, let's uh, let's fight a dungeon without facing any cards that cost less than three experience. Or give less than three experience. So we have Sixth Sense to guide us there. We also have bandages. Uh, so we can heal the archer a little more easily. Although we also have the alchemist who heals very easily as well with first aid and recovery. So let's see. If it has two experience, we can't face it. This has four experience, so it's fine. Um, all right, so this is a Team Orchid. Three mana or three agility plus the heroic. Um, we can actually claim items or potions if we want. Um, don't really like the invulnerability potion too much though. It does give you an extra potion. The achieve today. Win a dungeon without facing any encounters costing less than three experience. So anything that costs three experience, we have Rewind and we have Sixth Sense. All right, so do I want to face this? I mean, we're not going to be able to face easy encounters, so we're going to have to deal with the hard ones right out the gate. Uh, the consequences, so it's probably going to be Stabilize Aura because uh, I don't want the potion, the item is what I want. And uh, it's lower dice numbers, just more time spent. The consequences for failing are three damage and two time, but that's weatherable. So we'll just do that. Uh, we do have the eagle eye skill. Spend two time to roll two heroic dice. Uh, it's effectively saying, do I want to ensure I get, uh, get the 12 at the expense of the time spent, but not the damage? And I think I'm just going to skip it. Uh, we have Combined Shot and Deadly Chris. Uh, we also have Ingenuity, so actually I want to give that extra die to the Alchemist. Um, but yeah, so Combined Shot, increase your partner's strength dice by one, or one of them by one. Deadly Chris, for every two mana spent, your, your, oh, you or your partner may roll a strength or an agility die. Uh, neither of which can be used in perils, so it's quite perilous. And that was an awful roll. <laughs> three ones? Of course it's three ones. Actually can rewind. So what does the achievement say? Win a game without facing any encounters. So can I even use rewind? Does that technically mean I face faced the encounter? I don't know. I gave that to the archer. Do I want to actually... Probably want to give that to the alchemist for combined shot purposes. This is definitely not a two, uh, two experience one. Faint. Spend two agility, prevent one damage, and gain an agility six. Well, is this something we want to do? Lots of mana, lots of strength. Yeah, why not? Encounters count as opening the door. Well, if that's the case, then it's going to be pretty hard to get this achievement. I'm going to assume, for the purposes of this game, that the achievement is, um, that the achievement is for, you know, if you have the choice to fight a two experience encounter, don't fight it. Actually, I don't want to give you the poison because you have not enough damage. I will do this one though, because we're a bit short on this. If, if it is that I have to uh, never open a two experience door, that's going to be rather hard. So we'll just fight it honestly this time. And if I don't get it after doing what I think it is, then we'll reevaluate. All right, let's get a five because we have to get a five. Um, what skills do we have? Deli Chris and precision. Precision can get us another five. Um, we do have a five here as well. We can cover the 12. 
the mana 12, that is. The strength 12, I don't think we will be able to. So we'll take two damage. Um, actually, could I cover it? I can if I get a heroic, which is easily doable. Uh, and this consequence is one poison. We want to avoid the poison because that does spend extra time at the start of each round. Uh, although I know the alchemist already has a poison. We'll ignore that. Uh, but we can give the archer this. We could also use precision to turn it into a five. But I don't think that's going to do anything. It could cover that five, but it won't cover the 12. So it's not worth it. That's fine. Spend to agility, prevent a damage, and gain a six. Is that better or worse than the mana die? I think this is worth it, even though it's pretty expensive right now. It gets us an agility six, which we're certainly going to want for the boss. It will also prevent a uh, damage, which is also very nice. You wrote the question wrong. Do encounters count if the door is open? Well, yeah, if the door is open, like this is opening the door. So if 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 this were a two experience encounter, then I already lost if that's the achievement. I assume that when it says facing the encounter that you're not actually entering, fighting and winning. But I can't do the rewind potion. So maybe I can't actually even use this potion for the purposes of the achievement. All right, uh, this is another four experience one. We seem to be finding all the four experience doors in our attempt at getting the not to experience achievement, uh, which is fine. Um, we can get an agility six. We have mana dice. So this shouldn't be too awful. It's only the, the long-term effects of losing the heroic die and the strength that are not too good. But we don't need the strength as much. I'm going to do this again. It's kind of spending time willy-nilly. Not a good man. Uh, well, I mean, it doesn't really matter. That roll doesn't matter because we could just spend it into getting faint, which we'll almost certainly wants to do because the agility is not being used for anything else. Could be used in precision, but uh, we do have a f mana five. We do have two strength fours. That's very good. We have a mana or an agility six. Um, I can increase a strength die by one, but that doesn't seem like it's going to do me much good. Uh, just short of that fifteen. Hmm. I mean, I can turn these into heroics, and I don't think there's any chance of covering that five, so we're gonna get even more poison! Does rewind go back to when the door is closed, or does it remain open? See, rewind says discard the encounter card, ignore all consequences. And it's used in the middle of the fight, so. <laughs> The text of the achievement, according to True Steam Achievements, is win a game without facing any encounters that have three or fewer. So, what three or fewer means remains to be seen. Flame Walk is probably worth. It gives us another agility six. Uh, so, two of our agility is going to faint for an agility six. Two of our mana, or six of our mana, are going into Flame Walk for uh, agility six, strength five, mana four. We'll see how this goes. Charm Panther. Oh, here's a two. Can't fight it. <laughs> can't fight it. Let's let's discard it since we can't fight it. Oh, that was a weird bug. Charmed Panther came back. Or the Panther, rather. The uncharmed Panther. Returned. Alright, Rune Circle. This is two experience. Can't fight it. Rope Bridge, two experience. Can't fight it. I feel like there's a theme here now. Dire Boar, three experience, can fight, shall fight, have to fight. I will not do that because I want to probably save it for the next fight. Dice cannot be re-rolled or increased, so precision is useless. Um, let's give this to Alchemist. Maybe we can throw it towards Flame Walk. 
fours and fives, and fives, threes, and twos. So not a good set of six. That would count towards flame walk at the very least. That's a five. I have to cover the shields first. Um, see, I could get faint, but that doesn't really do me any good. Although I guess I don't have enough to cover that other five though, and faint will give me a six back. Uh, we have the strength there. We don't have a strength six. We're not gonna get a strength six. Can cover that three, maybe. Um, I mean, we do. We can throw mana into deadly Chris. So if I. Throw the six in the flame walk, I get four back, and then I have a three and a four, so we can roll three strength, or, or rather three agilities, and maybe get a five out of that. Um, we just need one five. Even if I go in the faint, that's not gonna help me. They're actually not working a strength six. Oh, we need a strength six. Never mind, that's that's the problem. I mean, this five can go there. Is there a way? No, that's not going to be any better because... Because that strength five doesn't cover that six. We don't have any other six on the board. Faint gives me a six, but it costs two agility, one of which is going into that five. Um... If I wanted to convert this to a heroic to turn into the six for flame walk, I would lose one of the agilities for faint. So there's no way I can just get a heroic. So there's not much point in trying to cover this with the heroic, because it's I'm still gonna get the her, the agility from flame walk, and I can't otherwise use it for a strength heroic. If I do roll a strength five, nope, that's not gonna do it either. Ugh. Okay, so now we have to get lucky. Deadly Chris. And combined shot, except I can't increase dice, but I'll just, they'll give it all to the alchemist. And there's our six, all right, good. Well, fortune was on our side. All right. Um, spark on the alchemist is probably a good call. Because it will synergize well with Flame Walk. And we're going to stay on the floor, go in this door. And Moss Golem is four experience. Add two times the consequences for each heroic die on this card. Yeah, sure, totally. Good strength roll. There's a mana six there. Strength is covered. Agility, not really. We need a, we need a mana five. We need an agility six, and we do have precision. We have faint. Flame walk, however, would give me an agility six, but it wouldn't give me a mana five. Hmm. And whose four was this? This was Alchemists. Hmm. And this was Archer's five. Because we could precision this two and get the five covered, but then we don't have the six covered. Flame Walk would give me agility to cover the six, but I still wouldn't have something for the five. I guess this might as well go into spark. There's no reason not to. That gives me a f mana five. Um, which one's flame walk. I just lose that mana five. Uh, 
Uh, we could throw into Deadly Chris and have Archer throw Agility because we could precision it. Or we could also feint the Agility dice and get a 6 that way. And then Flame Walk gives me a 6 and that covers that. So I guess the problem is I still don't have a mana 4. Alright, I mean, well, let me take everything back. I... So if I leave that there... We have a 5. Flame Walk gives me a 6. So I just... So all I need to do is cover... Um... Is cover this... Or no, we have that 6. We just need to get Flame Walk is all we need. So I, I'm overthinking. Um... And we do have an excess of strength, actually. I mean, this is a four that could go into flame walk as well. That saves that five. I get a six, so I just have to get a four. Uh, but if I th fund Deadly Chris, there's a chance we could roll a three. Essentially, we need a three or two twos. Uh, but we do have an excess of strength, so how could I utilize that? Because we are getting five strength back from Flame Walk, so I don't need one of those sixes in there. Um, I don't think that two doesn't does really anything, but it can turn into heroic. So, all right, so we get a six from Flame Walk. We have that covered. We have that covered. So can we? Um. Can we avoid using... I don't know what I'm trying to avoid using. Two, four, five. Yeah, that's not going to work. I'm I, I'm trying to avoid having to rely on a dice roll. But that's not working. Mana four. That's not covering anything. That just goes in the Deadly Chris. But if I have Archer roll two agilities, I get a six, right? Flame walk, then the five and a four combine into a heroic to cover the P4. Oh, by the way, I don't want to put agility or I don't want to put heroics on this card. Uh, that's another thing to watch out for. I totally forgot about that rule. So this heroic we should just not use. Or we should just throw into flame walk. Let's reevaluate everything yet again. Um Oh, purple four is what that stands for. But yeah, I don't wanna I, I, we need to avoid using the heroics. That's the extra complication in this. But I think since we Oh, that's not even my two? Oh, no. No. Well, the heroic, can, or a heroic can cover the five, but. Whose two is this one? <laughs> uh, let's do this so I can see. So this is okay. So if I spend this two here and give that to the alchemist, then we can fund flame walk with heroics. It gives us a five. We salvage a six. Six there, five there. So we need an agility four. And we can get that with faint. So it doesn't, yeah. So why was I having such a hard time figuring this out? This, it doesn't matter what this roll is. Okay. You know, just because I'm feeling saucy, let's put the two sixes in the faint and get a six out. Except I get to save a damage that doesn't exist anyway. All right. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Um, so, strength die or awareness reduce the difficulty of each challenge box by one. And I kind of really like the skill. Even though it's only for perils, perils are where dice are kind of tight anyway. Um, we have three strength, three agility, three mana. And all of these are armor boxes, so it might be worth just taking that skill. 
Um, and oops, that was not what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, everyone has, or we don't have full skills yet, so we'll just give that to someone. Uh, we'll just give it to the archer. And we're done. Sometimes you just roll a 12. Okay, so any twos, ignore. Vine trap, flee. Trickster, flee. Thorn spitter, okay. We're fighting you. Um, let's strike down. I I don't want to. I don't really want to play with fire. <laughs> Is it? I mean, it doesn't matter anymore. Combined shot. What is the skill I was thinking of that the partner could use? Oh, it's not the partner. It's alchemist can use it. All right, awareness. Uh, that changes those numbers. Increase one of your dice by one. So the problem is I can't cover the eight. I have to cover the armor. I can't get a two and a three. And yeah, well, there's not much option here. <laughs> These are the consequences. Okay, precise blow, strength five, agility two. Strength five is what I want. That's the alchemist. Like the, the agility two actually would synergize well with faint though. The archer does not have strength dice, unless we deadly Chris. Maybe I want to give that to the archer. Even though we're short on strength die for her. Strength dice for her. Green circle to experience. Let's discard an open door. The glitch appeared again. The panther is experienced too. <laughs> After a certain while, we're gonna have to use rewind because we have no choice. Like here, I have no choice. I have to. So if I don't get it because I entered this door, I'll be sad because I can't just um, I can't use the potion yet. So I have to enter. Uh, I will skip the feet. Can't roll. Or I can't use the potion. So if I don't get the achievement, then it's annoying. <laughs> but. All right, so we'll just rewind immediately. This is probably going to be a fun boss fight because we're not getting many dice or skills in this. Oh, good, I have to do this again. Well, this could be a short one deck dungeon stream. <laughs> Okay, avoiding the two experience as best as I can, considering that the game keeps giving me two experience. Poison Cloud is three experience! I can do it! Yay! Okay, let's contain. Let's not do that. And we do have Spark, so this can help us, or we'll just roll ones, either or. Um, awareness, two, three, we can do that. Increase one of my dice by one. See, the problem is... That's not good enough. Um, and the other problem is that the wrong person rolled the one. Because this one can only go in the eight. And I can't cover this two, this three, and this four, and this eight with three dice. Uh, why? Okay. It's fine. It's only a flesh wound. Uh, okay, uh, Archer is at their skill limit, so I can't get that. Um, that's fine. We'll take the mana die, I guess. We'll give that to the Alchemist. Um, if I stay on the floor, I can't flee an encounter. Can I use the potion right now? I can. We have to heal someone, because 
I am liable to die to a poison roll. Um, actually, yeah, we could just heal both poisons. No, we can't. When you use a potion, heal one damage. Ah, bad, bad synergy. There. Okay, so let's. Okay, heal the poison. And then use another one of those to heal that poison. All right, descend. I have zero potions left, but I have two in mix, so it's fine. Also, recovery also could have healed me. Forgot about that. That's fine. Giant spider. Ooh, I can fight you. Lots of strength here, though. Uh, yeah, sure. We're kind of running short on uh. Options here can't really flee anymore. I don't think Except for the twos because I have to All right, um Not good mana there Probably should just use precise blow there faint probably with those Hmm this one I could Combined shot, but that does me no good. We have something there. We have something there. I'm really unhappy with my mana roll. Um, Let's throw these two into spark, I would say. That gives me a six. I'd like to save it for that, but we would also like to use flame walk. Like the agility there is fine, but we have to consider about flame walk. Uh, well, I don't need one of those sixes if I'm using flame walk, so we'll throw one of those in there, and then I can flame walk. And that gives me a four, and a six, and a six, and then something there, and something there. Good. Except I'm currently dying, so not good. And all of those were armors that are covered there. That's covering a poison, but certainly covering a heart and a poison is better. We're gonna have to use Deadly Chris. Except that's not my six! That's my six. Okay, um, and combined shot means I want to give all of these to the alchemist. And I get a three to five. And I have no hope of covering the six. But I survive. Also, I forgot that we used faint, so one of my damages was prevented. Um, did that change anything? We're going to take two damage now. We're t or we were going to take two, but if one of them was prevented, we we're going to take one. Yeah, this is a little better. Hey, Cat Dreaming, welcome. We are dying. <laughs> We're not gonna get this achievement, I don't think. This is too hard. We're trying to get the achievement for not getting, or not facing any encounter with two or fewer, or with, well, two experience, basically. Uh, and we kind of already had to fight something to use Rewind, and so either I'm already locked out of this achievement or I'm not, but I don't really have much in the way to help me right now. All right, this is this could go to the alchemist, but dice is tight, so I think we want to go for strength instead. I'll just give that to the archer. We don't have any strengths. Oh, we have precise blow. Never mind. That's fine. Bramble field is too experienced. Can't face it. Dire boar is three experience. We can't face it. Dice may not be rerolled or increased, so we're just gonna use this skill. Going to be running the Sentinel Comics RPG tomorrow for some friends at college, so you're excited. Ooh, good luck with that. I have not played the Sentinel Comics RPG yet, because I don't really have friends to play with. I don't have friends. Ah, the strength roll is atrocious. I can put one into Precise Blow to get that five. I can put the one and the two into Faint. Um... Four into two go into flame walk. Yeah, we should do that. The three can go into spark. 
Might as well, because it's not going to be any worse. Or actually, it can't be increased, so it could have been worse, but okay, yeah, but that was five, that's fine. So where does that put us? We don't have a strength six. We do have something to cover the five. We have stuff for the armors. We have something sort of there, there, there. Poison is mitigatable. It's a pretty straightforward system. That's better there, right? So I just placed a bunch of dice. I'm not sure I want to place all of them where I did. Like this four could be placed in almost, well, not almost anything, but the strength three is certainly less, or has more consequences than the agility three. Um, and those consequences on the hero on the agilities aren't nice consequences. That five c will definitely go there. Yeah, I guess that kind of has to go there. It helps that you're a part of what amounts to the table topping club. <laughs> you're a part of what amounts to the table topping club. <laughs> Got it. There was a tabletop club at my graduate school. I went to a meeting in 2012, but I think I was uh, very uh, awkward there. <laughs> and I was too afraid to go back for what I basically said and did. But if anyone recognizes me from that, well, I've changed. Deadly Chris is an option, yes. Now, the issue with Deadly Chris... I could try to just, like, gamble it to all hell. I mean, like, okay, yeah, we do have enough for Deadly Chris, although it might be better to do something like this. Uh, or probably this would be a little better. Because then... Nope, that doesn't do anything better for me. I'm trying to, like, see if I can save, like... I mean, like, I could convert these to a heroic and cover the three. And then my hope is that I can roll a strength and an agility. I can't use any of the increasey skills. I mean, we do have this. So actually, I think we should just roll all strength then, right? So, oh, but... Uh. Yeah, I can't do all that I want to do. Actually, that was absolutely not what I wanted to do. <laughs> also, I think I might have considered this too as an option at one point. All right, we have no increasey skills, so it doesn't matter who rolls. I'm gonna roll two, uh, two, uh, two agilities and a strength, and maybe we'll roll exactly what we need, or maybe we will barely cover one of them. <laughs> Um, and I can't do anything, so we'll end the encounter. Okay. So, strength die or spend an agility. We kind of just need more dice, in all honesty. Taking a break from the Summer of Challenges? No, we're doing the thing where I do one deck dungeon and then follow it up with the Summer of Challenges. We're not at the Summer of Challenges yet. Alright, flee that... We have not used Sixth Sense yet. Oh, and well, there's some damage. That's good. Very good. I thought this game was going along too easily. Vine Trap can't fight. Can't. I was trying to say can't face. Turned into can't fight. Almost said can't face. Uh, this is scary. And I kind of feel like it's not worth doing. That's a lot of strength we need. We do have more strength than like anything else now. But that's a lot of strength we need. And we're going to get a poison. I'm just going to flee. Basically, whatever this next door is, we're going to just fight the boss afterwards. Poison Cloud, three experience. Yeah, let's go ahead and contain it. Let's... It doesn't matter at this point, so we'll just spend the two time, get an extra die out of the deal. Alchemist does have the skill that can roll something for us that might help. Uh, we can also lower things by one. So two, three, 
three, and then we can cover the eight. Yay! We finally did an encounter without losing. And we'll just take the die. Five times 3.5 is 17.5. Yes. And that's 3, 7, 12, 17, 29, <laughs> which is 11.5 higher than average. Okay. I don't have high hopes here. In fact, it's already over. <laughs> All right, well, that was fun. <laughs> Let's cover these squares. Not really much that makes sense. Let's just throw it into awareness. Um, let's just cover squares there. You are using healing. We can get you grit. Yay! We did something there. All right. We did not get the achievement this week. <laughs> I kind of want to actually read up or ask questions about this achievement before I try again. Uh, whether what I just did in that where I had to use potions to get rid of doors, whether that auto automatically gets rid of the achievement. Because if it, if it, if I was already locked out of the achievement, then this achievement is pretty hard to get. But it's not like there aren't achievements that are pre pretty hard to get because uh, covering all the squares in a combat encounter after rolling too poor to cover any of them, I still have no idea how I'm going to do that. But we're done there for now. We're going to continue on with the Summer of Challenges. Uh, so before I forget, change the game. And update. There we go. You have a recommendation for Challenge Chairman. All right. Give me the recommendation. That was where we were at last time, and we did not manage to pull it off. Um, I know we had a listing of heroes that we were going to use, uh, but you suggest Freedom 5 Legacy, so we'll go ahead and do that. With Fixer and Expat, and we'll lead with Fixer, because we have to. Dark Watch, Expat. I'm going to stick with base fixer so that we don't destroy our cars as much. And I still want to stick with Pike Industrial. Uh, although I am willing to consider Rook City next time because it's not like we're having much luck anyway. I mean, eventually we will, I, I'm sure. Freedom 5 Legacy is the most versatile. You may either move an environment card and play to the bottom of the environment deck or one player may play a card. And if he gets incapped, he has this interesting thing where players may play cards, use powers, or draw cards, even if they would otherwise be prevented. So I think the only situation where that would be relevant in this game would be Grease Gun, where Fixer could not use a power or draw cards. But with this, they could, he could still use powers and draw cards. Uh, but yeah, being able to move a bad environment card so we could mitigate, like, lab rats or uh bad vats or extra card plays to get us set up faster which would certainly happen in the first round um and just legacy in general is really good at support and considering that most of chairman's deck consists of melee and projectile damage if we can get legacy with uh the lead from the front and two next evolutions we can make ours make us all immune exactly all right, so that's a fair bet. We will do that. Challenge Chairman against Mr. Fixer, Dark Watch Expat, and uh, Freedom 5 Legacy. You kept tabs on you, Slim. This isn't your fight. Go back to your garage. Um, although maybe this is kind of like the... Um, I don't know. Although we know it's Chairman, and Fixer can probably guess that it's Chairman, maybe it's kind of like those uh, you know, documentary clips where it's like, the following person wished to remain anonymous for the sake of anon anonymity. Anonymity. I've kept tabs on you, Slim. This isn't your fight. Go back to your garage. <laughs> you are the man behind why I must fight again. Let's put this all to rest. So maybe Chairman is trying to pretend like he's not Chairman. Who knows? Mr. Fixer has Hoist Chain, Meditation, Pipe Wrench, and Riveting Crane. Darkwatch Expatriate has hollow points, prejudice, quick draw, and tactical shotgun. 
And Freedom 5 Legacy has Fortitude, Lead from the Front, and two Motivational Charges. So that's already pretty supporty for Legacy. Not next evolution, but Lead from the Front and Fortitude can redirect some damage and reduce its effect. Motivational Charge could also heal us. And there's no other healing other than the Biomimetic Vat. Don't you need the robot Reddit voice things? I mean, maybe? What was that card? I just missed it. I was too busy talking. We have a fence. We have a thief. Thief does nothing. Uh, th I'm guessing they did the Healy. They did the Healy. Yes. Okay. Well, we could one-shot the thief with Pipe Wrench. We can one-shot the thief with Motivational Charge as well. Uh, we can do Pipe Wrench and Tactical Shotgun to take out the fence and Motivational Charge to take out the thief. I like that plan. And we do have Meditation, so we can do the Pipe Wrench and Driving Mantis combo. That kept Fixer alive in at least one game. One damage is pretty small. Experimental mutagen with no rats. This is challenge, Chairman, because this is summer of challenges, Hank Roy. Hello. How are you doing? Broker, contract, informant, and then the hired gun. So, kind of good to get the contract before the flip in case we can somehow go a game without prison break, which is rare. Even though we're gonna get a card play, I think I still wanna get Driving Mantis. Um, oh, and prison break, okay, that's kind of perfect because we got rid of one of them. Some of the challenges should be easier than some of the ultimates. Uh, so it's some are, like, so yeah, it's like technically, yeah, challenges are easier than ultimates, but we do have extra rules in place for summer of challenges. Uh, we can only play it with three heroes. We have to lead with the nemesis and all decks must come from the deck that, or not the deck, the, the, uh, the, the expansion that the villain comes from. Which is why, against Chairman, we're forced to lead with Fixer, have Expat with us, and play in Pike Industrial or Rook City. So, that does limit our options, and it does kind of make things rather harder. But, um, it's not necessarily a challenge meant to be super difficult. We're kind of going a little more for theme, I would say. Now, let's get rid of the informant. We could fish for the other prison break since we already got one, but... I don't know. Um, so we're not going to be able to take out all the things. Uh, but we can take out contract with some wasted damage. With hollow points in the shotgun and a motivational charge. That's going to leave the broker out. And the broker is going to uh, play another card. It's going to leave the fence out. The fence is going to bring a thief out. The Healy part doesn't matter. We're not able to hit the chairman operative yet. There's not enough damage happening. Hired gun is going to have another round, but without the plus one. So it's not going to be as bad. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to weather the storm here. The informant is probably the most annoying thug in the deck. Yeah. Considering that, as we talked about last time, the hard part about the chairman is that he essentially has three card plays on his turn, and the broker adds to that. The broker and the informant add to that. All right, let's get fortitude. So we are going to have a card destruction, so it could be fortitude. Oh, we have a redirect. Hello. Um, It's only one damage, though, and it's not really going to make or break anything. Let's just throw it on the broker. can also redirect hired guns damage unfortunately it's not ordered well because it's gonna he's gonna do the damage before the fence gets a 
gets a uh, thief out, so we can't just redirect for that. All right, we have all of the underbosses. Oh, well. Okay. I mean, you already did your start of turn card play, but we will avoid the informant. In before uh, prison break. <laughs> Rick City's mine. Two card plays. Escaped Labret. 18 more kid. And Biomimetic Plasma Vance. Uh, which is actually good timing here. The only unfortunate issue is that uh, it's uh, reducing our damage as well. And the underbosses are harder to hit. All right, so I mean, I like Driving Mantis. I like Pipe Wrench. Um, Pipe Wrench is what's allowing me to deal damage. Riveting Crane would allow me to make damage to a target irreducible. And Pipe Wrench would help us get past the Plasma Vat. It would not help us get past the Crooked Cop. The shotgun, um, well, that's very useful right now, even with the potential for Pride and Prejudice, because it's big damage, and big damage gets past effects. And motivational charge and fortitude. I kind of want to keep motivational charge, even though I already have one in my hand, because I want to play Surge of Strength. So... I don't know. I could get rid of Driving Mantis, put out a Grease Monkey Fist. I could get rid of Driving Mantis, put out a Riveting Crane. And then I could go after something, make damage to something irreducible, like the Crooked Top, and we could get the Crooked Top out more easily. We don't have that much damage. Ugh. I do have a spare charge, yes. I guess I don't have to play Surge of Strength, but I mean, the thief is gonna keep destroying things and the fence is gonna keep putting th putting thieves back out unless we deal with him. We can get a hollow points back on the shotgun so that x pack can do six damage, which would be four to the fence. but we don't have a means of doing even more than that. I mean, if I do Grease Monkey Fist, one plus one plus one, minus one minus one is one. And then, uh, Hollow Points would then do four plus two minus one minus one, which is four. And Motivational Charge with Surge Strength would do two plus one minus one minus one. That would take out the fence, right? And then, uh, then there's no more extra thieves. And then a prison break comes up, <laughs> completely undoing everything. I think at this point, we're kind of just going to wait for the vats to explode. Or, well, singular vat. But a vat explosion would help do the AoE damage that we are lacking right now. So, that's, um, oh, I also have to discard. Well, quick draw searches my trash, so I might as well just discard prejudice. Not that quick draw really helps us that much i feel like quick like okay i've complained about the fact that expat lacks card draw i feel like quick draw should probably say something like you may draw a card search your deck or your trash for either pride or prejudice and put it into play if you search your deck shuffle your deck you may play a card i feel like this should have been a cyclic card i feel like that i feel like that i mean come on it says quick draw it's supposed to be quick okay all these ideas I have for expat, but it doesn't matter because it's never going to do anything. All right, Grease Monkey Fist, and then let's hit the fence. And we lost the redirect from Fixer, so I'm not going to be able to cheese the operative with it. Uh, that was not the card I wanted to play. Wanted to reload.
Now the escaped lab rats are going to chase after the higher ground and the thief. So actually that's fine. Even with the plasma vat, they'll still do enough damage. That's fine actually. So even though we're not targeting those things, the rats will take them out for us. But we do have to take out the fence because the rats can't get it. And the irradiated, irradiated cyclohexene vat. So the vat, the rats would have taken out the um, the thingamabobber doohickey. The 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 the, the fence. <laughs> um, that's Nemesis. That's zero. So there's a plus one, but there's also a minus one. So it's wonky. So now there are three underbosses in the trash, so Chairman's flipping. Okay, good. No prison break. Uh, this is, I think, least damage. Hey, John, how are you doing? Who wants to discard a card? So professional tonight. <laughs> this is my teaching dress. Dress? This is my teaching get up. Set up? Get up? Attire? Attire. This is my teaching attire. Um, Not really much. I mean, like, it's a polo and a I have shorts on so it's not really not really anything exciting you don't really have a car to play I mean I guess jack handle would be good so we have two enforcers so we're gonna have to discard two cards well, we could discard pride because we have two quick draws. Naked from the waist hat. Yeah, that is exactly what's going on. All right, let's discard the other motivational charge. Okay, I think it's time to jack handle. Uh, order does not matter. Chairman will probably react. Chairman is just going to do chairman things. or it did not happen. Squash is a racket sport played in a box. Racquetball is similar but different court and equipment. So technical. <laughs> All right, Crooked Cops are getting annoying as expected. The well, rats will probably take out some of them. All right, let's get our guns. Let's do the prejudice first because pictures look better. Um, two plus one minus one. Well, yeah, we'll just. This is gonna be wasted damage. This is not going to be wasted damage. The rats will currently take out the crooked drops. Um, a legacy is going to take out a crooked drop or an enforcers. So I guess it's better to just take out both enforcers and then have the rats take out the crooked drops. Ooh, lead from the front. Awesome. I'll just take out one crooked chop. I know that they're going to come back, but let's just do it. Uh, 
Oh boy! The rats are getting vicious tonight. I mean, I think in terms of damage dealt, the environment is in the lead. <laughs> Uh, on terms of taking out targets for us. But this is actually great, because they'll hit the muscle and the deputy. Food time! Um, nah. <laughs> okay, no prison break still. We're kind of just, uh, <laughs> we're kind of on borrowed time, I guess, in that sense. Do I want to swap my style now? No, not really. I'll get rid of a riveting, riveting crane. You don't need two of those. And I want a toolbox because cards. Dual crowbars is nice. Harmony, good. Extra damage can't hear, or can't hurt. You know, it's a good thing. Chairman doesn't have a way to stop or punish card draws. He can do a lot of nasty stuff, but he never touches the draw. He doesn't fear that. True story. Uh, order does not matter. It could matter. It's not going to matter. Uh, this is one damage. So actually, we want to redirect this, right? Yeah, we want to redirect it because that will be zero. You know what can stop car draws? Megalopolis. Megalopolis can stop everything. In fact, Chairman can force you to stop card plays and power uses with Megalopolis. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you are now remembering that one shot that I came up with. All right, Arsenal Axis, I mean, let's see. The shotgun is going to take out the Crooked Cop. Um. <laughs> the rats are going to wipe the board. I don't really even need to... Uh... Do we need a choose different damage every time button? No, I like choosing the damage. It makes me feel awesome. I mean, there. I guess, so, like, there are, like, what? 11... Damage types. Could you make the twelfth, like the twelfth icon, since it's a three by four and you have a blank over here? Could you make it like random, and then we could click it and hold it, and then it will select for the rest of this turn? So we have that effect. That would make that would that would fix the UI, and it would give us exactly what we want, which is random damage. <laughs> um. Anyway, that's not really a big priority though. All things considered. Um, let's see. So rats are doing two damage twice to two targets. Or not. So two damage to two targets. We have three of them. So if I take out the crooked cop, I, could I ignore everything else? First would be Enforcer's Muscle, second would be Enforcer's Muscle, third would be Muscle Deputy. So Enforcer's is gone, Muscle is gone, Deputy would be down to four. So the Muscle is gone regardless. I mean, I guess if I don't touch the Crooked Cop, then I'll do Crooked Cop Forcers, Crooked Cop Enforcers. Muscle Deputy. Like, there's an argument that could be made that we kind of want to not damage these underbosses because a prison break could come out and we'd rather them be at 1 HP than full HP if we can, but I don't think that's going to really matter ultimately. Um. Okay. 
Because le so Legacy can one shot the cop. If I could do four damage to the deputy, then the third rat takes out the deputy, and then the board is cleared. Um, and the shotgun is going to do three damage, so it's not good enough. There is a biomimetic, a biomimetic vat in the way, so it's actually five damage. I'm going to arsenal access. Incendiary rounds and submachine gun. I'll take the incendiaries. Um, it's not going to be good enough. Kind of tempting to just take out the deputy with legacy. Because uh, rats will do cop enforcers, cop enforcers, muscle fixer. Hmm. Well, bolster allies, I think. Next evolution! Phase one of my plan is complete. I haven't been using Legacy's base power at all. I... We do have overdrive. Arguably, overdrive is better. That's one damage to all targets. That It's going to take out the lab rats, though. We'll just stick with motivational charge. Um, so they're going to do deputy enforcers, enforcers muscle, and then there will be a Healy, and then muscle fixer. So actually, uh, fixer is going to be damaged regardless. Uh, but I think taking out the Crooked Cop means that they hit the muscle more, so that's fine. That's fine. Or we just get a chemical explosion, which wipes the board for us. As long as I hit the... Oh, the Crooked Cop's gone. Okay, so it doesn't matter then. All that planning just for everything to explode. And not just that, but the mutagen's going to destroy itself. Ah! <laughs> Prison break! It's okay. We're fine. Everything's fine. Hired gun is less scary with three heroes on chairman's flip side because he only has a plus one. Everything's fine. We do have a next evolution. Uh, probably will need to use that. Uh, we do have submachine gun. We do have lots of things. Discard a card. I already have a toolbox in play. I don't need two of these. Destroy a card. Toolbox! <laughs> I don't need toolbox! My name is Mr. Fixer. I don't need a toolbox. Uh, Alright, so this is 2 plus 1 plus 1. I'll survive that. The best laid plans of dolphins and dudes. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm not really that... I think this is fine. I honestly think this is fine. I mean, like... So, Informant is out, he's going to play another card, and he'll either heal or play two environment cards or something. But, this is fine. Do I want Harmony or Overdrive? If I do Harmony, I could do... I could do Overwatch on Legacy's turn. And then I could do Overdrive. I'll do Harmony. So now I'm doing plus one, plus one. So three. 
And I don't think order really matters because we're not taking out the crooked cop. And we're not taking out the contract. Now, the retaliations are going to hurt Legacy, but it's going to hurt Fixer more. So I'll do this. Legacy's fine. You can take that. <laughs> We're tied at 13 each. Woo! I also have salvage yard. Cool. Okay. Um, I lied. I don't have submachine gun. I almost had a submachine gun, but I instead got incendiary rounds. Okay. Um, I could assault rifle. That would take out the cop, and then I would have two more points of damage. One on contract. Uh, cause Fixer, is Fix, Fixer's doing three, right? So, and if he's overdriving, then that's actually gonna wipe the board. Except for the deputy. So I actually want... Hmm. If I shotgun the contract... So we're not going to get the deputy out if I do that, but if I shotgun the contract, it's going to put the contract down to two, and then I could take out the contract before I take out the crooked cop, and then the retaliations do no damage. But that won't take out the deputy. Otherwise, if I... I could take out the deputy if I just do one point of damage to it and then fixer with uh overdrive will wipe the board but he's gonna take damage from crooked cop from broker from enforcers or not he but there's gonna be damage from crooked cop broker enforcers destruction and fixer hitting the chairman all of those can redirect to legacy that would put legacy down to nine uh which i mean it's not a terrible thing, but do I want to prevent that damage or do I want to prevent another crooked cop from coming out? I guess it's fine to have a crooked cop because we're not going to get a uh, prison break again. So I think we could just save legacy a bit. So I'll just get the 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 dumb thing where I search the wrong place. Let's get pride and then shoot the contract. And then this game becomes a lot easier. So next evolution, I could have also flying smash, I guess. But let's let's start getting uh, melee and projectile immunity, uh, or at least we're we're two cards away from being able to do that. But yeah, uh, let's play card fixer overdrive. Buy mint. <laughs> I think I already lost the mint uh, a long time ago. Fixer's powered twice. Take out the contract first. Uh, and then let's do it this turn. Because we're going to see a lot of that. And I am going to just select uh, Sonic. For this turn. So I'm just going to sit back and watch. Except I have to do that. <laughs> All right, so we have successfully gotten through Chairman's deck, having seen pro both prison breaks. Uh, so that makes the game easier. Um, priority number two, not that we have priorities. 
Forgot to hit the chop before chairman. Ah! There goes the mint! You're right, I should have done that. If I lose by one, it was here. No, we're not going to lose. We're just going to do all of this all over again. Uh, All right, so... Cop. Or no, yeah, hit chairman. Or uh, hit contract. Let's do this. And here, I'll make this super speedy. Beep, beep. This is what happens when you have a fast PC. Uh, and then yes. So fast. Okay. Experimental mutagen was destroyed. Experimental mutagen. Um, that's okay. Uh, that takes out the deputy. All right. That is also going to chomp on one of us. Um, I'm not really too happy about that. We're going to get three rounds of this damage, so Legacy has to take it. Because that's uh, <laughs> that's otherwise going to be six damage to that hero. So let's uh, minimize that. Let's minimize that pain. And then that's you know, we're still going to get lots of damage here. Um, that's going to be three damage to Legacy. We are getting low. <laughs> uh, but I'm just going to pretend like there's no problem. <laughs> okay, salvage yard time. Play overdrive. Deal damage. Is This should take out the lab rats. It should. And because we're in Pike Industrial, might as well just make it toxic. It's going to be toxic. Fixer is such a weak hero. All right, experimental, mut experimental mutagen is destroyed again. Yay. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I never really get Pride and Prejudice to have more than two ammo types next to it, so I feel like I kind of just want to do that. Uh, just because <laughs> you never get to see two ammo types next to Pride or Prejudice because you put an ammo next to it and then you use the gun immediately. So let's um, let's be saucy. We'll put this next to Pride and then we will use the shotgun. And I kind of just want to get the operative out before the shuffle so that we don't see underbosses on the shuffle. Which... I'm gonna, I'm gonna take down to slow down to further slow down the shuffle. Um, do I want to do overdrive again? Nah, we're hurting. I'm gonna next evolution, or uh, not next evolution. Well, 50/50 shot of undivided attention, and a four out of seven chance that the environment does terrible damage to us. Also, uh, so I don't really know. What makes sense. I mean, this is also going to be energy damage to Legacy. But yeah, we'll just motivational charge. Yes. 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 At this rate, I might kill the chairman before the operative. I mean, technically, I've done more damage to the operative than I did to the chairman. So it's not necessarily at this rate. Also, they're not playing a card. Or Yeah, they're not playing a card. Oh, good. This effect. I hate this effect. This is one I will fast forward on because it's awful. Okay, and there's not really a way to prevent that other than Overwatch, which we are too far away for. Uh, but that's fine. Like, it's starting to get hurty. <laughs> We're 
you're starting to feel the pain. Okay. Maybe the crowbars might have been better there. Probably, actually. Um, that's fine. Uh, flying smash. And let's get rid of that super cool Trisolvan Vat, because that's going to get rid of... Like, that would put Fixer from 5 down to 2. Oh, Chemical Explosion. Nice. That's still going to put Fixer from 5 down to 2. Top 2 cards of the environment deck. Irradiated Cyclohexene Vat and Super Gold Trisolvent Vat. Great! If Fixer plays a card, he dies! Unless it's Pipe Wrench. Um, so let's not do Pipe Wrench. Or, I mean, well, let's not play something else. So, sorry, I can't play Dual Crowbars, otherwise I die. Um, I mean, I could play Pipe Wrench and survive, but I don't want to. We got this, though. It's fine. We got this, fam. Uh, liquid nitrogen rounds on prejudice for good measure. We're down to one. No biggie. Um. So pride is doing two plus one plus two is five plus one is six. I mean, I would be remiss if I didn't aim this at the chairman. And now this is three, but yeah, might as well aim it at the chairman. So yeah, we still got the chairman out first, uh, which means that if I let them reshuffle, then there is a chance that the chairman might come back into play. So you're saying there's a chance. All right, we did it. Challenge Chairman has been bested. And we survived with a grand total of five hit points. But it's only the last one that matters. Okay, uh, so Chairman is down. So what does that leave? We did... Uh, let's remember that. We did... Play Grat first. We did spite. We did base spite. We haven't done variant spite. I might save that for for last, just because that ties in with with uh, you know the other thing. Um, we did chairman, so that leaves matriarch. And I guess that means we're fighting matriarch in Rook City. And this is a tachyon nemesis, so we have to lead with tachyon. And Fixer and Expat are along for the ride. Uh, Expat has been in slot two for a while, so let's put Fixer in slot two and Expat last. And we've been using Dark Watch Expat. Let's use Base Expat. Uh, let's bring Dark Watch Fixer. Do I want to use Dark Watch Fixer? That can help deal with the. Um, bring the Harpy too. Uh, per the rules and regulations of Summer of the Challenges, I can't. <laughs> Alright, so challenge, which means domain cards are indestructible. Uh, Yeah, let's do Dark Watch, Fixer, and Base Expat, just to be different. And Tachyon, which variant do we want? I kind of feel like Blitz is going to be ridiculous, so let's use Blitz. 
Because Nemesis damage repeatedly? Yes. Yes. All right. So, uh, Challenge Matriarch versus Freedom 5 Tachyon, Dark Watch, Mr. Fixer, and Expatriate. Expatriate? Ex Expatriate? <laughs> In uh, Rook City. I'll bet you've already moved on to thinking about some experiment. I'll make you pay for thinking I can be ignored. You have magic, but no control. No more will others pay the price for your tantrums, Lillian. Although it's Tachyon, so it really says, You have magic, but no control. No more No more will others pay the price for your tantrums, Lillian. <laughs> okay. Green 5 Tachyon has blinding speed, fleet of foot, pushing the limits, and sucker punch. Dark Watch Mr. Fixer has bloody knuckles, driving mantis, grease gun, and pipe wrench. Expatriate has incendiary rounds, RPG launcher, shock rounds, and speed loading. Guess what? No guns! But we do have a fleet of foot. Four little words. Hyper, Sonic, Ass, Alt. Nope, don't have it. Okay, Mask of the Matriarch. And we are starting this game off with a Foul and a Dark in the Sky, which plays another card. A Foul and a Foul and a One Shot. Excuse me. All right, Nimble Strike, Overdrive, Quick Draw. There's a gun. Tachyon and Dark Watch Fixer might be a pretty good combo. She has a fair number of disposable stuff for him to use. Eh. Not really. <laughs> I mean, Synaptic Interruption, sure. Research Grant, sure. But I don't know. She has a lot of one shots. All right, pushing the limits. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Bloody Knuckles obviously is a good idea. I think I'm going to ignore these fouls. Deal each hero target one. Deal each hero except the highest one. Deal each hero target one. That's only three damage. With three heroes, she only retaliates for one, though. First time playing this on tabletop. Time for a bigger table! <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, like when you have to scroll this in order to see all the things, yeah. I remember the first time I played, I was like, wait a minute. Whenever a foul card is played, the top card of the villain deck is played. Wait, does that mean foul, 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 foul? Yes, it does. Uh, so, let's... I want to take out the mask, right? So we'll hit the mask... Uh, I would like to do Nemesis damage to Matriarch, but that's fine. We'll hit the mask. I will skip this unless I would do damage to Matriarch with it. And then Bloody Knuckles with Pride or Prejudice will take out the mask, so that's perfect. Pushing the limits is especially good because it blows itself up. If you choose it to. <laughs> Uh, let's actually quick draw. Okay. Prejudice. So, she's only playing one plus N cards, where N is the number of fouls played. You will target with the second lowest? Well, this is why I left the fouls in play, because we're going to take out a foul. All right. Uh, let's hit fix her. I think we'll just do the damage unless um, Hugin or Munin or whichever is the damage one comes out because that does make it a bit tougher. Foul. 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 And a darkness guy. Hmm. Is that insanity? <laughs> oh, a manifestation was played, so we're going to play the top card of the villain deck. Oh, a manifestation was played, so we're going to play the top card of the villain deck. Oh, a manifestation was played, so we're going to play the top card of the villain deck. Um, yeah, I'm not really happy with this. We have a shock rounds. All right, we're going to shock rounds. 
Uh, I don't think I can get rid of the mask this time. Piper and should do four. Um, I don't have any damage here. I could put out a synaptic interruption and fix or destroy it. Hey, I can, I can do a synergy with Tachyon and Fixer. <laughs> Um, if I Sucker Punch, I do destroy a foul. If I Blinding Speed, I destroy an ongoing card. Um, I mean, like, we're destroying the fouls anyway, and I don't think there's reason to worry about that. So we'll just take something out. Um, and then this is Expat. You're gonna be dealt damage. It's only one, so it's fine. I mean, I can use Blitz. We have three bursts. We can do one plus N then. Um, with Pipe Wrench, Fixer's doing four. So we have five damage to the mask. Shock Rounds and Prejudice would do three damage to the mask. That's eight damage. So I could use Blitz once and take out the mask. Um... And let's put Fleet of Foot on the very bottom because that makes it, that will draw it faster. Yay, Fleet of Foot is only 32 cards away. And yeah, I could Grease Gun to avoid the damage, but it's only one, so it's fine. Actually, Expat will be hit once, and then Fixer won't be dealt any damage, so it's even better. Because I'll also be able to take out the mask. There, mask is gone. Yay! Uh, so, yeah, damage. And then here's where the uh, repeated decision feature pays itself in spades. Falling statuary. Well, there's no fouls. Let's hit expat and keep fixer higher. Foul. 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 Domain. Which is, by the way, indestructible. Alright, so we only have three fouls. Um... Here with the lowest, here with the highest, each except the lowest. I think that's okay. And Fixer's the highest, so we could get out of Driving Mantis and redirect the Blinding of Rook's damage. So that's something. Um... So I think we're, we're just going to go ham on Matriarch. So now with the Carrion Fields, when we take out a foul, this will hit Tachyon and Expatriate for one, which is the same damage as what the uh, Unkindness of Ravens is doing anyway. But the Unkindness of Ravens will do damage every villain turn, whereas Carrion Fields would act only uh, the first time it's destroyed. But yeah, we'll sucker punch the kettle of vultures because that makes the lowest hero lowester. Um, and then can't do th can't do anything about that. But then I can supersonic response. Get supersonic response. The carrion fields, which is indestructible, by the way. But yeah, definitely hit the matriarch and blitz. I do think it's still a little too early to do this, but this could be 10 damage. But there's still a light speed barrage to consider. So let's not use this yet. Lightning reflexes and sonic vortex, which also cares about bursts in your trash, fun fact. All right, Driving Mantis, do we have something to sacrifice for it? 
No. A lowster always pays their debts. I mean, I know it's not proper English, but any effect that targets the hero with the lowest is a snowball effect because the hero with the lowest is dealt two damage, which makes them have even less HP, which makes them even more of a lowest target. Whereas anything that targets the highest, while well, that can bounce around because whoever is the highest, you hit them for two, they're not as high. Maybe there's someone else that's higher, but if you hit whoever's the lowest, well, they have even less HP, so they are even more lowest. I always try to take out the lowest damage effects because I feel like it's better to balance highest HP than it is to uh, sacrifice a hero. And yes, I know I have pushing the limits. You keep pointing out that I have pushing the limits. And I know I don't have two card plays, but I like the two card draws. But I guess that can be sacrificed. Sure. Riveting Crane, all right, excellent. That will deal with a um, cohort when it's needed. Speed loading, we do have ammo in our trash. Um, sure, because that will also let me play an ammo at the start of my turn. Instead of playing incendiary rounds, I could, now I could play incendiary rounds next turn and not lose my card play. I could also have three RPG launchers for when two is not enough. You don't always need a third RPG launcher, but then you have it. Also, uh, card play on the Rook City turn makes me sad. Foul, foul, foul. And a Mask of the Matriarch, so we're actually getting an extra card play for free. Woo! Plus, the foul's coming out right at the start of this turn. Not, not good times. Not good times. Uh, but Fixer doesn't care at all. <laughs> Fixer doesn't care. Fixer's just like, bring it on! And, um... 2 HP. I mean, at this point, I feel like it's likely that it's just going to be the Fixer show yet again. So I'm just going to redirect it to the Matriarch and let Fixer take the show. I mean, a lot of these crow effects get negated by having damage reduction, so... Fixer does not care about crows, but Tachyon cares about crows. Tachyon's hurty. Man, if only I hadn't used pushing the limits, then I would have more HP right now, right? Foul. Domain. Eugen. Well, the good news is I'm still alive. I can Blinding Speed Skullman Villainy, and I can Sonic Vortex. And yeah, it is time to blitz. It is very much time to blitz. We need an end of days. <laughs> um, And I can take out fouls with this. Uh, except no, carrying field to go off. Which, I mean, the kettle, well, okay, so which are the ones that would actually hurt Fixer? Um, the ones that do the highest two, so let's get rid of the building of Rooks then. Oh yeah, we can also target Fixer, correct. Circle gets the square. Because the combination of Pipe Wrench and uh, Driving Mantis makes him able to redirect even more. I like that combo a lot. Okay, now we're going to wail the Matriarch. And, yeah, just hit choose for me. Actually, um, this turn, someone's going to say, why is there a choose for me button when uh, it's not a order decision, but let's just do that. 
My right eye hurts for some reason. I've played too many video games today. Oh, man. Well, we have a speed loading that we could eat. A prejudice that we can eat. Um... A grease gun that we could use to keep people alive, but uh, it's not like Tachyon has a surprise has a an, has an amazing good play right now. And I mean, we're gonna get Munin next round and a Horde Cacophony, so essentially, this decision doesn't matter. <laughs> But yeah, so we're going to be losing our ongoing cards. I did beat Challenge Chairman. I did. I did. Destroy three hero ongoing cards. So my ongoing is going away anyway, so I'll just destroy it myself. You can't have it. It's mine. Did your suggestion of Freedom 5 Legacy help? Well, we survived with five hit points. I mean, like, yeah, it, it definitely was good. Um, Destroy. Yeah, so I have to destroy if I do that. So instead, I'm going to put out the incendiaries. Um, someone's going to say, well, Eugen's going to destroy something. And that is a valid point, but we have a prejudice to destroy. I so Actually, why did I shoot that? I, for some reason, I thought I had more instances of damage. Let's not do that. Let's just shoot Matriarch, because bring on the pain. Scum and villainy. Why do I feel like we were down this road before? Oh, you're gonna destroy two stuff. Ugh. That's not fair. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. I mean, the good news is she's not going to be on this side for long because there's only four cards left in her deck. Oh, boy. That, that, that was not what I meant to do. I wanted it to hit meanwhile. Look at this. Look at this. They may play an extra card during their play phase. They may draw an extra card during their... Draw phase, put the top card of a hero's trash in their hand. I kind of like that. Uh, power, destroy. The next time they use a power, they also deal one target, one projectile. I mean, like, this kind of sucks. <laughs> I mean, I can grease gun, right? And... I can survive Scum and Villainy, and I can survive Hugin. Or not Hugin, I can survive this. I mean, I mean, we have problems here where uh, he's destroying stuff and he's increasing damage, but the Grease Gun effect will stop most of the fouls from dealing damage, which will keep Fixer alive long enough to um, play Grease Gun. <laughs> I mean, what, is this like, is this like a, can we do this forever? Put the top card of a hero's trash into their hand, grease gun, grease gun gets destroyed. Put the top card of their trash in their hand, grease gun, grease gun gets destroyed. I mean, it's not infinite, but I mean, we could just keep playing the game until falling statuary, maybe. Although that's gonna target fouls. We could do this fun trick where we just keep spamming select a hero and the next time they use a power, they also deal one target, one projectile damage. And, um, and maybe that could do something. Um, maybe. <laughs> Although that requires me to be able to... Well, I guess if we're going that route, we could... I don't know. 
Salvagerd, Pipe Wrench. Oh, that doesn't really help though, does it? Hmm. Well, I like the plan of let's uh, let's just freeze the game for as long as we can. <laughs> Falling statuary. Um, sure. Let's target the one that came out after. Yeah. Also, fun fact. Carrion fields are now never going to do anything. Because there's only one target. So, that's great. Carrion fields are indestructible and they, de they don't even deal damage anymore. Tachyon's deck isn't especially effective at dealing with Matriarch's backlash effect. Tachyon is OP against Matriarch. I mean, yeah. She can hypersonic assault and wipe the board and stop Matriarch from retaliating, so that's definitely worth it. So this is not going to be an infinite loop, but hey, we can, uh, we can just pretend like it's an infinite loop. Blighted streets. Excellent. Excellent. This makes this even less of an infinite loop. In fact, it's not really much of an infinite loop at all, is it? Hmm. Hmm. All right, well, we don't really have much of a choice. We're going to play an extra card. We're going to Pipe Wrench and Riveting Crane. Because then I can do this. And this sort of helps. And I could destroy it. And it sort of helps, except it's going to come back immediately. <laughs> so it doesn't help. <laughs> Arguably, it was better to just hit Matriarch directly there. But there it is. Attempt number one. <laughs> 849. Let's try again. All right, this time we have a hypersonic assault. Oh my gosh. A research grant, a sonic vortex, and a sucker punch. And what I really like about Freedom 5 Tachyon is that it makes research grant not a terrible power. Like, it gives you reason to use research grant. Not that you have no reason to play it with, like, super scientific Tachyon. But um, generally having two card plays is more fun than draw two and discard. And it's also not as good with freedom six because you could just have everyone draw cards unless you really need Tachyon's trash to build up. But yeah, freedom five Tachyon gives her a reason to use research grant. Dark Watch Mr. Fixer has Meditation, Riveting Crane, Savage Yard, Toolbox, and Expatriate has Pride, Speed Loading, Submachine Gun, and Unload. So there is a way to deal with fouls. Uh, she needs to deal damage to Matriarch and one of the cohorts negates that damage. If it's only one cohort, then it's still going to get through because it's one plus one damage. So take that. Speaking of which, hello Munin, how are you doing? Hello Munin, my old friend. Okay. So he's not destroying things, but he is reducing damage. It's probably going to be worth getting Munin down to one and then leaving him. So that when Hugin comes out, I could take out Munin and then 
effortlessly take out Hugin. For that to happen, we have to damage Munin. <laughs> That's the flaw in that plan. Alright, so highest, highest each. We also have Riveting Crane, which can help with damaging Munin, or even Matriarch for that matter. I don't think we are set up to take out the Mask. And I don't think I want to Hypersonic Assault this turn. Three fouls are fine. Um, Sonic is obviously not what I'm going to do. Sucker Punch is not as effective as Hypersonic other than getting a burst in the trash. So I'll just research Grant. Yeah, we're just going to have to deal with a round with the mask out. So we're going to get extra card plays. Um, and we'll just get, we'll get rid of Sucker Punch. Actually, no, we'll keep Sucker Punch because it can take out Munin. So do I want to get a style or do I want to deal damage? Well, we're kind of not really able to do permanent damage. Or I mean, well, we can hit the mask. Um, but kind of want to stall with Fixer and get him set up. Let's, 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 let's do Riveting Crane. That would help with Munin. Uh, and let's, let's pride. Yeah. Ooh, hair trigger reflexes. Falling statuary takes out one of these. Um, I think that's more damage, right? Three versus two. Well, that's why we didn't take out the mask. Except it plays more cards anyway, so just kidding. Dark in Disguise is just annoying. Oh, well. I played Riveting Crane so I can keep it out and she destroyed it anyway, so. This might be a hypersonic assault turn because seven fouls are a lot. But see, Nemesis. And let's fast forward through this because it's the same effect. Can I take out the mask? Um, either I sacrifice pride or I sacrifice toolbox. And I probably want to sacrifice toolbox. Uh, and if I do that, then I don't need to do this damage. So we'll skip this one. Yes. Voice chain is good. Agreed. Arguably, though, um, Jack handles better because you'll get rid of all the fouls. <laughs> but yeah, Hoist Chain can reduce Matriarch's retaliation. And if you have like a submachine gun, you can wipe the board with impunity. Uh, hair trigger reflexes. And then we can take out fouls as they come into play. Um, which is going to hurt with Munin. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, you're mean. All right. Blighted Streets or Scum and Villainy. These are both awful. Ugh. 
because if this card is destroyed, it plays the top card of the villain deck. When this card enters play, it plays the top card of the villain deck and deals damage if I don't destroy it. But inevitably, we're getting a villain card play, so I'll just go with the scum and villainy. Just because the plus one hurts. All right, carrion fields. That's that's your only card play. That's awesome. All right, hug goggles for sure. Um, Synaptic and Fixer could eat that. So that is not good but really that's just the best plan right there um okay so the problem with ongoings is that she could or cacophony them away so i don't really want to get out i guess the um riveting crane because it could get destroyed i have a meditation that can guarantee i get it even if it's in my trash but i want to save that for when i do want to play it so hoist chain might be good then pipe wrench is also fine it was awesome the previous game it kept fixer alive far longer than the rest of the team um it's not guaranteed she's dealing damage. And I don't need to use Fixer's power per se, because it will be reduced by one. So I'll put out Hoist Chain and I'll keep it out there. I'll keep everything out there. Uh, so Expat, um, I think generally you're just gonna put cards out for Fixer to eat. So speed loading. And you might as well just take a shot. I guess you could just play submachine gun. Whatever, that's fine. Oh my god, it's coming villainy. <sighs> this is my life now. I mean, yeah. It's probably not going to matter. She's going to play Dark in Disguise, but probably not going to matter. Um, and I know these are going off. But I mean, like, you're in Rook City. What did you expect? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember when I was like, there's no guarantee that Matriarch's stealing damage? I mean, technically that was correct. I did not, did not want to actually... Actually... Can I game the system here? Can I game the system? Can I... Cheat? <laughs> uh, because if she's going to play Dark in Disguise after this, can I save the hair trigger reflexes for after Dark in Disguise? So that... Uh, so that I can hit these fouls after Dark in the Skies would go off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minimize the pain. Or you could just play a bajillion fouls. Oh, 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 that's what's gonna happen. Okay. Oh, so uh, you saw right through my plan and you played a mutant card, got it. Perfect. Uh, 
Um, let's not make Tachyon higher than others. Or you'll just do it anyway. Whose who's wise idea was it to play in Rook City? I see how it is. I see how it is. At this point, it probably would have been better to uh, not have taken out the fouls, but I... It's half a dozen of one and six of the other, so I don't know. I'll take out her trigger reflexes. It would help with taking out fouls, but I mean, we're kind of almost dead, so I don't know. Okay, can I somehow do enough damage here? No, Sucker Punch won't help. Um, I don't care what's going to happen. I'm going to accelerate the assault. <laughs> So I'm going to have to make a decision here. Uh, might as well do this. Might as well do this. Uh, even though it doesn't matter. <laughs> might as well do this. Might as well try to make someone else have, be a second lowest or something. Okay. All right. Decision. Um... So we don't have enough damage, right? So <sighs> we have any damage boosters here? No. If I want to sucker punch Munin, we have to do one point of damage with Mr. Fixer. Um, Hugin is going to destroy two ongoing equipment cards. We have three. So, do I want to sacrifice Hoist Chain to do the damage to Munin and destroy that? Because, I mean, like, now yeah, we're going to lose all our setup. Do I want to play Driving Mantis and maybe redirect something? Do I want to do something else? I mean, if I play like a style, if I play like Driving Mantis or Grease Monkey Fist, it's not really going to matter. It's not going to destroy Munin, and I don't want to destroy Munin. But... It gives Fixer something to destroy, and then I could destroy. I could keep. I could keep one of these cards. I could also have Expat play something like Submachine Gun. I guess that would also keep one of those cards because we're losing two cards. Three if I use Fixer's power, which he has to use his power. Uh, so maybe I'll just sacrifice like Grease Monkey Fist. Cause, I mean, all right, we know what what we know what Rook City's playing. So, so Munin's not getting destroyed by the environment. And we'll just put out an extra gun, and um, oh, I can destroy Scum and Villainy, and I might as well because no point in using any of my guns. Uh, but zero zero. Zero and ineffective, but might as well. Because falling statuaries can still target it. Can still target it. 
Scum and Villainy, which plays, uh, let's see, there's... Oh, good, a 50-50 chance of a foul coming out. <laughs> uh, falling Statuary, let's do that one. Um, and this time, definitely hit Tremata. Actually, yeah, well... Okay, well... So Dark in Disguise is coming out. This is not good. <laughs> Actually, we, if we can keep the submachine gun and we can keep hoist chain, we can survive. Maybe. Probably not. <laughs> Alright, foul, 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 foul. Imagine if every single one of these fouls entering play triggered a card play. That would be stupid. <laughs> Okay, and then the mask, and then uh, thankfully they all act at the start of the turn. Sucker Punch Munin. And. How many bursts? One, two, three, four. Because we're not destroying Matrix, right? And we should just hope that there will be a rainy day. Right? 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 We're gonna submachine gun, and. Um, and Fixer's gonna hoist chain to reduce that effect. Submachine gun with incendiaries will do two damage. So, uh, mask will be down to seven. So let's, because she's gonna play a foul and then shuffle, we absolutely want to destroy the mask. So we absolutely want to do this. Um, I don't think we're gonna be able to do enough damage regardless. We absolutely want to destroy the mask. Actually, we absolutely want to destroy Hugin too. Ah! <laughs> All these things I want to destroy. Well, actually, no, it's fine because if Hugin is out, he acts at the end of the villain turn, and if the trash is shuffled into the deck, there's no Hugin. Yeah! Or no Munin. Yeah! Yeah! Everything's going according to plan. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, sir! Uh, we don't have overdrive, um, so we will meditate into something that makes remote sense. Um, if I do Grease Monkey Fist, I take out the mask. No, I can't, actually. Um, well, Driving Mantis, yes, 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 see? Uh, because we'll just destroy it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, because we have to keep everything. Yeah, yeah, sir. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. Uh, reload. I don't have ammo. Unload. I have one gun, so it's incendiary's time. To like zero effect. Okay. And then here we go. Oh yeah, there's also carrion fields, by the way. Um, I forgot to factor that part into this master plan. And well, there goes the damage. Okay, and then there goes Fixer. All right, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. My house is on fire, but this is fine. Uh, This is fine. <laughs> okay. Well, we will listen to some Evanescence. <laughs> That's what I think of whenever I hear the Matrix theme. I think of Evanescence. Just the uh, the the singing part of it just feels a lot like Evanescence to me. Like this part. Or actually not exactly this part. It's the part Well there's the voice that sounds like Amy Lee. And then the drums. And then this is Evanescence right there. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me tackle Chairman and then fail spectacularly to Matriarch. 
we are going to next week have Summer of Ultimates on hiatus because next week is the start of September, which means that it will be actually next Friday is my father's birthday. I might have to reschedule the stream. Well, stay tuned for when I'm going to do the stream next week because it might have to move. But the next time I stream Sentinels, it will be the uh, monthly Oblivion match. So that will put Summer of Ultimates on, or Summer of Challenges on hiatus for the one week because that uh, does not have a challenge mode, and I'm not real. I'm not willing slash ready slash wanting to uh, do advanced Oblivion because I still have struggles with base Oblivion. Still trying to learn that fight. I had like one or two victories, and uh, both times it just felt like what got me was the right reward, kind of. Not really strategy, but rewards. Anyway, uh, stay tuned for that next week. Uh, Oblivion next week. Um, other channels, or other streams on this channel, uh, we have Handelabra Live every Tuesday with John and sometimes Jeremy. We have Tales from the Archive every Sunday with another letdown. And on a random day of the week, we have On Deck with Pirate Savvy and Dover. They streamed yesterday. Um, they're scheduled for Saturday at 8 p.m. And who knows when they'll stream Saturday at 8 p.m. I don't really... I mean, it's it's a scheduling fiasco for them. I'm not... I, it's just funny. On a random day of the week is On Deck. Who knows when it'll be. Uh, and one day of the week next week will be uh, Dolphin's Dive. Um, stay tuned for more details on that. Thank you for watching, everyone hope you enjoyed the stream and i'll see you next week um yeah good night